My name is Sayed Hadi Ahmadi and uh, I'm cultural heritage expert. I was in BAM for two years after earthquake and uh, also before earthquake part-time but to, uh, full-time uh, just a few hour, hours after earthquake I was there for two years. The BAM was, uh, you know, a very beautiful, a big castle, a Montbury castle, and everyone knows BAM Citadel as a symbol of, you know, earth and architecture in Iran. And uh, the, the day that earthquake happened, I was there after just uh, few hours after earthquake I, were, uh, I went there and I saw a, just a, you know a, a mountain uh, instead of Argibam it was you know a big collapse and uh, everywhere in city uh, it just destroyed but the the most worst part of city was Bam Citadel uh, yes, you know, uh, in south east of Iran, the big uh, th there's no too much city, and uh, from Sistan to Kerman, we have uh, something like 300, 350 kilometers. In this distance, there is just uh, Bam, uh, or better say there was just BAM because uh, it was needed to be uh, a settlement there for historical route, for, uh, you know, for security, that part of country, for everywhere. But uh, there is some natural uh, advantage for there. The, the fault that caused earthquake in BAM, uh, it caused uh, some natural dome for underground water and 2000, 2500 years ago the people, uh, you know, found this water underground and used canats and they, they made their garden and made uh, their own paradise there in the desert right and since then uh, there is a very green city with uh, enough water and uh, it, it just uh, the the city just uh, uh, bigger be bigger and bigger and sometimes uh, it was biggest city in uh, south west southeast of Iran for a long time, and uh, still um, uh, the the Bam era area is uh, the most uh, you know the, the most famous settlement in that part of Iran. Actually, according uh, to the archaeologists' finding. The oldest part of BAM back to 9,000 years ago, uh, we call it Tape Atashi. Uh, and uh, there is a hill there, the archaeological hill, hill Tape Atashi. The dates back to 7,000 to 9,000 years ago. But the BAM city, we know as a BAM now, uh, the dates back to uh, 2,500 years ago. Actually, the BAM citadel as a symbol of BAM, there is a several layer, archaeological layer in, um, in its arch architecture, and uh, that dates back to Achaemenian period. It means uh, 2,500 years ago. It shows uh, on that time, the BAM exists, and also it was a very famous uh, place in Achaemenian Empire. Uh, 
the the mud brick size that uh, archaeologists found there uh, improved that this castle exists that time. You know the the background of Bam is full of mystery and uh, there is no exact story about that, but uh, somebody refers to uh, Shahname. You know, Shahname is a uh, the, the Persian poem about Iran history by Ferdowsi, great. Uh, there is something that uh, uh, Ferdowsi said something about uh, Kote Kerm. Kerm means warm, it means uh, silk warm or something like this. And there was a gate in Ergebam. Uh, we call it Kotekerm. And somebody uh, found a relation between the, that poem and uh, the background and history of Bam. It means uh, a part of uh, archaeological study, there is some, some things, mystery about Bam. So, uh, the, the first city, perhaps, was uh, something military or some sort of security city for um, a Caymanian emperor. But uh, time by time, the city changed to big city as a settlement, I think. Actually, the mud brick technology didn't change so much till now. You know, uh, the difference between mud brick in the building with several lawyer, historical lawyer like Argebam, it's just uh, about the size. You know, the the, the old mud bricks uh, was uh, too big and heavy. Now uh, we use. Uh, 24 centimeters to 24 centimeters mud brick, but uh, the first one was uh, about maybe 40, 45 centimeter to 45 centimeters. But the technology or um, the you know the the method for making mud brick, I think, still remain um, as same as 2,500 years ago. I mean the the ordinary mud bricks. They use uh, soil uh, and put water on it. And in first step, they they made the uh, mold mud and put in the uh, timber frame and uh, then remove the timber. Another one, another one, and put under the sun to to dry it. It's just very easy, very simple. It's the mud brick. Okay. And then uh, use, uh, one time more, use the clay for stick these mud bricks in the structure. Yes, there was a, a dilemma about uh, how we rebuild BAM. I wasn't the decision maker, you know, uh, a high rank uh, committee in Tehran, they decided to rebuild BAM by mud brick, but not uh, traditionally as was. And for this purpose, uh, several universities and UNESCO, of course, helped us to to make uh, some sort of mud brick that uh, is more resistant about earthquake and something like this instead of traditional mud brick. The method of mud uh, making mud brick still that method that I told you during history it was you know the the timber frame and clay, but. Right. The scientific part is uh, to 
choose what kind of soil we use. For this purpose, the French people from Crater, uh, they helped us to uh, reach their research about the soil and clay. So uh, we we had a you know vast study in uh, Bam area to find the best soil for using mud brick, and uh, in second step uh, we use something to add mud brick. Usually uh, in Iranian traditional architecture they use some straw uh, to add uh, mud brick for increasing uh, uh, it's resistant about cracking. So uh, we have had some study about what kind of straw we have to use or better to use. And um, on, on that article, you, you read something about the palm dates, palm, oil, uh, yeah. palm straw. Uh, there is some leaves uh, around the you know the palm uh, we used it for adding to clay also uh, out of mud brick we use that uh, leaves we call it cis for strength the structure made by mud brick yes everything in everything in BAM still made by mud brick but uh, as I told we add something to just uh, increase its resistance about the earthquake first uh, study about what kind of soil we use and then what kind of adding things to soil and third how uh, you know, put them together. Uh, there are several projects in BAM. One of them uh, by German, uh, by German, German experts from uh, Dresden. The, yeah, Dresden University. They use some new material for uh, stick. Uh, mud brick together in wall uh, such as uh, fiberglass and also we have Italian they're uh, using some some sort of fiberglass and uh, you know the plastic uh, material for strength strengthen the mud brick structure in BAM and also the Iranian part using the palm trees says um, rope they made the rope and you know put together uh, the mud brick dome for uh, testing how it works yes it's different approach Usually, actually, it's the first time. Uh, you know, it, this methods used for first time uh, in Iran after earthquake. It was first time, and still it's first time. Everywhere in Iran, we have mud brick structure and architecture, but uh, they use uh, traditional methods for uh, reconstruction or restoration of it. Uh, usually. Uh, they use mud brick as it was before and uh, nothing add uh, except the straw but in BAM for first time it was a new experience uh, to use it and uh, it's very soon to judge about it but it seems works good you know, uh, it's not about philosophy. It's about uh, you know the basic theory of construct uh, conservation. You know, there is several charts and uh, you know chapters in in word that uh, 
specify how we have approach about the historical building and also for you know for keeping uh, authenticity but uh, in case of mud brick structure earthen architecture uh, it's more complicated you know uh, for example in in a stone work you can use a stone instead of stone in fire brick work you can change the old uh, fire brick with new one same material same shape everything is same but in this case uh, some some experts uh, you know argue about we have to rebuild bam city bill as it was with same material same method just keep the tradition keep the authenticity and some uh, some others believe that uh, we have to reconstruct them with new material uh, and totally reconstruct it rebuild it and uh, exactly what they said it's it was out of authenticity so the middle decision between these two group it was rebuilt them by traditional material but using the modern methods and uh, this approach say us using mud brick using that form that shape but uh, try to have a best mud brick possible you know with uh, with knowledge we have now about the mud brick soil clay we can add and uh, you know extract something and having uh, you know the best mud brick possible but everybody knows the mud brick is the weakest uh, the weakest uh, material we had you know the mud brick is very flexible very you know uh, very cheap but it's very weak again uh, instead of uh, fire brick instead of stone instead of uh, concrete you know we have uh, the weak structure very weak structure with mud brick but we still have mud brick in reconstruction ba in BAM reconstruction but using the best mud brick possible uh, with some sort of study that we had the you know BAM always for Iranian uh, have some sort of uh, nostalgia something like this you know everybody in Iran uh, particularly some uh, who are visited BAM or you know, who are you know uh, have uh, some relation to cultural heritage know BAM uh, they knew BAM uh, and uh, you know everywhere you could find a picture of BAM so it was about all Iranian, but uh, for me, as a, as a you know cultural heritage expert, as somebody who uh, who passed my bachelor cycle uh, in Kerman University, and it was very close to BAM, and uh, I used to be work there part time during my study in BAM. It was, uh, you know, more than baby. It was a symbol for my 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 work, my profession, and it was a symbol for cultural heritage, actually, and still it's symbol. Uh, you know, we have a lot of cultural heritage monument in Iran, but Bam always was and is different. I don't know why, because of 
uh, maybe because of uh, you know its history, because of its shape, uh, what it looked like, or maybe about all everything be about the mud brick, because uh, somebody believed the earthen architecture monuments are different, and the people uh, prefer to remember this kind of building instead of others. So uh, the BAM for me was different that time and still is different. And uh, it wasn't my baby. Maybe I was uh, uh, his baby or if, if we can call he. But uh, I learned a lot of things about BAM. You know, uh, it was a stepping stone for me. And uh, the, the basic things I learned about uh, restoration, cultural heritage, conservation, and uh, cultural heritage management, uh, it was in BAM and it was rela related to BAM. Um, but more than arch architecture, uh, archaeologists found uh, a lot of things that it was, uh, you know, undercover and uh, earthquake just uh, just recovered all this information about uh, BAM. That part of Iran, mm, it was very poor about archaeological data and uh, the BAM earthquake shows to archaeologists there is uh, several lawyers in BAM because before earthquake uh, everybody thought uh, this is a citadel, a very strong citadel and uh, it maybe dates back to 2500 years ago but they, they, they didn't know it's uh, contained several historical lawyers and uh, it was impossible to find uh, this information without the earthquake because uh, they didn't know what's happened inside the walls, what happened under the houses and uh, palaces. So the earthquake still give to archaeologists information, still after 10 years, uh, yeah, to 11 years, they still find new things about uh, BAM. Actually, I'm not in charge of BAM or related BAM anymore, but uh, as I know, uh, the, the, the recovery project, I mean, the, the conservation project still continues, and uh, they are trying to, you know, reshape, you know, uh, back to the BAM Citadel before earthquake you know, what, what, what was look like. And uh, they try to rebuild as much as they can because uh, they have all plans, they have all documentary, and uh, the, the, the maybe uh, three, uh, 30 percent of them still uh, remain without uh, earthquake uh, effects. There is uh, several, you know, some uh, point of view to look at the building who uh, destroyed by something, war or earthquake, natural disaster. First of all, uh, the BAM Citadel was uh, inscripted in national heritage list in Iran. And according to law, the government have to protect and have to conserve, have to restore this kind of building that uh, nominated and registered in national list. Uh -huh. It was the first. So the BAM was uh, more than a national treasure. It was a uh, world heritage. Um, World Heritage property, but not officially, because it's uh, actually it's 
register it after earthquake. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody in the world knows them. And uh, it's famous, it, it's famous, uh, you know, it's famous shaped to words help them after earthquake because if uh, that earthquakes happen in another city without BAM Citadel, uh, maybe we, we hadn't this much help from world. You know, everybody knows BAM because of BAM Citadel. And uh, BAM peoples loves BAM Citadel as a, you know, something more than proud. It was symbol of their city and still. And uh, all things together uh, caused to the government decide to uh, reconstruct them. Let me uh, explain about another earthquake in BAM, according to the, the information we get. Uh, there is a big city, really big city, uh, near the BAM, uh, maybe 10 kilometers to west. According to the archaeological data, it's destroyed by earthquake and uh, left. It was maybe uh, 600, 700 years ago, or maybe by war. It's, uh, uh, it's not important uh, why destroyed, but they leave, they left. They left that city and moved to new city. So that time, with uh, their norm, their, you know, their uh, criteria and uh, their tradition, uh, they did the usual things. They left the city and made new city. Also, we have experience in Iran, in Tabas. Uh, 35 years ago, there was a big, big earthquake. It was like BAM earthquake, and uh, similar to BAM earthquake in, in case of the number of dead, the, the scale of uh, destroy mm -hmm. uh, destruction in the, in, the, in Tabas the government that that time the government decided to uh, leave city alone and made new city we have uh, now we have new Tabas and the old Tabas since then just uh, left but this time um, the government have two choice make uh, made a new BAM with new material uh, in maybe out of the city or uh, stay the city and they decide to stay I, and I think it's the best choice because uh, uh, the new BAM with new houses have uh, their own authenticity and uh, the BAM Citadel, if, if, we, if we wanted to have a, a new BAM Citadel with concrete, maybe it was better to build, the, uh, build it near, near Tehran. You know, some, somewhere around Tehran, we have had all maps, all plan, and all uh, documentary about BAM. And we had enough concrete, and why not uh, build somewhere around Tehran, and with uh, you know, twelve people live here, and maybe we have had some something like uh, you know five million people in year uh, come to visit this Bam Citadel, but it's everything about authenticity. And you know the cultural heritage is authenticity, right? And, and we try to keep it. So it means uh, we have to uh, conserve the BAM history as much as we can and rebuild somewhere that uh, authenticity allow us. 
So uh, after 12 years, you can see the BAM Citadel much more similar than it was before earthquake. You can see a lot of scaffolding, uh, a lot of workers who are working on reconstruct BAM, but it's very different with the BAM Citadel just after earthquake. It was, I mean, after earthquake, it was a hill. Just, it was a hill. But uh, the millions, millions of, uh, millions cubic meters of debris now removed to out of uh, BAM Citadel, you can uh, see all uh, alleys and you know the bazaar, uh, the buildings, video debris, and you can see uh, the uh, restoration workshop everywhere in BAM, and uh, some were totally reconstructed, some were just uh, uh, restored uh, and. Uh, and some, uh, how? Uh, and your question was about uh, how uh, did? Yeah, that's exactly right. And what can I see? And then maybe also uh, the workers. And the workers, uh, yes. Before earthquake, there was, uh, there were, um, I think, thirty, forty worker. Uh, including the masters and uh, you know uh, regular worker always they try to renew the the the, the, the quotation and the, you know the the roof uh, cover for uh, for winter rains and something like this mm -hmm. it was the the major duty they had every day but now you can see some uh, several workshops with uh, labor and masters who are actually rebuild and restore the destroyed uh, buildings with uh, plus in it, it means uh, you can see the experts, the educated experts with these teams who are uh, supporting the, the scientific part of restoration and also we have a very routine uh, documentation uh, regime and every work every day uh, documented by photos and uh, you know driving and reporting yeah, because uh, now we have a world heritage discipline there, mm -hmm. and it's very different with uh, that time. Before earthquake, everything was traditionally, and uh, there was a scientific manager on, on that, but um, they they emphasize on traditional part of uh, restoration. But now you can see more scientific part of it, and also maybe more scientific uh, um, people there in contemporary history of Iran. You know, uh, that time all Iranian was united and uh, about uh, Bam earthquake and Bam people. And also, I think the, the world, uh, we have several countries came to BAM and help people, help to reconstruct BAM, and still, some, some of them still uh, help to BAM. Japan, France, Germany, and everywhere. If I get your question, the BAM the BAM earthquake uh, shows some things to people that uh, if everybody wants, the, 
the, the, the huge destruction, the huge disaster could be uh, could be some some sort of soul if if everybody be together. You know, uh, for two years I was in Bam after the earthquake. Always there was you know, thousands of people from everywhere, of, uh, everywhere from Iran and abroad. They worked there, and uh, you know now you can see a beautiful, clean city with uh, normal life. If it wasn't like that. Uh, no, we have, we haven't the BAM like this. Uh, you know, BAM situation. I mean, in uh, geographical, historical situation, is a very uh, strategic point. Is the BAM area? I mean, it um, it's located in a historical road we know as a Spice Road. And also, uh, the, the the old r road between the Iranian capital in several periods to other major cities uh, that part of them now in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and part of them now is uh, in Iran, like Shahr uh, Sukhde. From 7,000 years ago, the uh, Hane Golaman, from 2,500 years ago, and also it was a crossroad between the the most important uh, harbors in Iranian uh, historical times, like uh, such as Tis, uh, just uh, in in France of Persian Gulf and also uh, it was a strategic situation in uh, geographical uh, location because in north of Bam we can see the central desert loot and central desert for you know hundreds kilometers without any road without any water without any city and uh, in south of Bam we have a big mountain uh, we call it Jebel Bares impossible to cross uh, this mountain so it means if you as a historical person uh, want to cross Iran from west to east or east to west you have to cross this point right this point of map so, maybe one of reasons uh, that we have BAM there, it's, uh, it's it. It's uh, the geographical location. So, but uh, we have some other things with uh, the, the human activities that made BAM, uh, the BAM we know, such as uh, you know the the Kanat technologies and uh, you know the architecture technology and also uh, you know making the, the the people of Bam in history made made this uh, maybe a hot desert to some kind of part of paradise for themselves uh, a city that have a cold, uh, cold weather in night and uh, enough water with the uh, best kind of, you know, orange you can find yeah. there yeah. and best kind of dates you can find there. Uh, I mean, they uh, made uh, the weakness opportunity for themselves they change weakness to opportunity and uh, they have a you know the green garden just 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 behind the the 
biggest desert in Iran. After earthquake, when we, you know, when we study about uh, what happened with uh, traditional architecture there, uh, there was some, you know, unbelievable things. For example, the dome. Uh, you know, you know dome. Uh, it's a uh, part of uh, Iranian architecture that, you know, uh, surface roofs and uh, using, you know, arc, right? Uh, there was some unbelievable about domes in them. You know, all domes works sufficiently against earthquake. You know, I mean, uh, we, have a, we have had a lot of domes that still remains after earthquake. Right. But concrete buildings just just destroyed and also uh, we have had uh, some you know uh, uh, sort of you know, poor building I think uh, you know belongs to poor people right you know very, very simple yeah very simple uh, buildings that uh, destroyed um, sorry, uh, that remains uh, against earthquake and the people was alive because uh, they had, uh, you know, a very simple dome and, you know, simple, uh, simple walls. But in, uh, in other place, when uh, the buildings was, uh, you know, complicated plan, with, uh, with, uh, I can't find the word. Uh, there was an integrity mm -hmm. in in the in the material and plan. Uh, it was more uh, collapses, more destroyed. Instead of the building was very simple, ah. very, uh, very yeah, simple. And also, uh, in some buildings that uh, they try to uh, strengthen their building with uh, metal. I mean, uh, they use uh, some kind of, uh, uh, I can't remember. Kind of, kind of cross beam, metal. Yeah, uh, yeah, beam. Uh, they use the beam or maybe cable, you know, metal cable for, uh, maybe they thought it, it's better work in earthquake for, you know, uh, relating to wall together. Uh, they had dome above these walls and they use uh, iron beam or cable for uh, connect this, connecting these two, two walls, but in earthquake, these metals, these irons, just kill, kill them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, destroyed their building. You know, it was the worst solution for strengthening the building. But somewhere that they use as tradition, as uh, traditionally use um, uh, wood beams, right? Uh, they works very good. Huh? Yeah. Because maybe the wood is just a little more flexible. Yes, more flexible and also very, uh, very close to mud brick uh, quality. Some, some sort of, uh, you know, in. It, in very in very hard situation the wood brims uh, just just cut just breaks but uh, the metal one destroy everything oh, yeah. it's hard to explain yeah, for it, me doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't uh, release. flexible it doesn't, if it's gonna break it won't break so yes it would, yes it it's break. not flexible you know it's uh, you know the 
uh, the power is power when you uh, when the uh, these beams uh, can't uh, you know can't uh, we say give I think the word was give can give or, or flex yeah give uh, the power it just give the power to other parts of buildings but the wood keeps the power inside itself and uh, yeah the, I think there is chance still there is uh, for experts to study about BAM earthquake and the effects of BAM earthquake to structures because uh, yeah, one of my masters uh, always says it's the big re university for students that that can find and can see everything that never can see in books, in articles.